Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. It seems like the group of the Russian soldiers is trapped in Vovchansk. We may spot it after today's refreshment of the front lines from the deep state military map. They clarified that not all of the Russians were able to withdraw from the place, some of the Russian forces left in the local power plant. Just to remind you, Ukraine is now on counterattack in Vovchansk trying to regain some of the territory, some of the quartals. And here we go with the Vovchan satellite image, at least this city used to be like that, now it's totally demolished. But anyways, Russians are now trapped in this factory. After all, it's not the power plant, but some sort of the production. There are some basements and underground rooms where Russians might hide for quite a long time. But because they're out of the supplies, Ukraine will finally get them. Ukraine also doesn't hesitate to use the gliding bombs like JDAMs to attack the Russian bases in Vovchansk. Russians take residential buildings and factories as their bases. The fighting in this environment could be very volatile and might take time. In general, Russia is out of any tools to perform their massive strike on Ukraine once again. But what they are doing near Volchansk and in Kharkiv direction, they start to dig the ground, creating the defense trenches just 2 kilometers away from the front line. Here we go with Volchansk city again and here are some of the satellite images showing the trenches of the Russian army which they built very very close. So they concerned about the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Moreover, they used the engineering equipment and here rises the question of why Ukraine wasn't able to build the fence very close to the Russian border. Because Russians are able to do it even during the intensive fight in the particular region. At the same time, it's one more confirmation that Russia is out of the assault resources. They have those just enough to take the ground and to hold it with those trenches. The Russian offensive is totally exhausted in Kharkiv Oblast now they go on assault on the eastern side of Ukraine, but we're gonna review that part of the front line a little later. My friends, if you want to support the job that I do daily on YouTube, you may also consider to join my Patreon page. It is available with my personal link in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your kind support. The view from the Kerch bridge, you can see lots of the barges over here, so Russia put them to protect the bridge against the drone boat strikes. But nevertheless, there is a corridor, so the way through for the Russian ships from the Azov Sea. As you can see, one of the ships is going to the Black Sea from this channel. So there are some of the way outs for Ukrainian drone boats. It seems like Russia has obtained some of the legit information about the planned Ukrainian attack on the Kerch Bridge. At least I think like that, because Russian measures near the Kerch Bridge are extraordinary. It has never been done such a protection. All of those barges around, plus more of the air defense systems, were put in Kerch and also on the Russian part of the shore. The breaking news that really matter for Ukraine, G7 countries agree to unblock 50 billion dollars for supporting Ukraine. All of those funds will be taken from the freezed Russian assets. It is a great step forward in confiscating the Russian assets and also supporting Ukraine with those funds. 50 billion is a huge sum. It's just 11 billion dollars less than the major military support from the United States of America. We have this information from the AFP France agency. It means that Putin's money will be spent to support Ukraine. Before there was the misinformation spread probably by the Russian propaganda that France and Germany disagreed for the deal because the United States of America disagreed on possible negative outcomes if the deal wouldn't work. But as you see, for now everything works well, the decision has already been taken. So by the end of the year, Ukraine will obtain all of that package. Hopefully, all of those funds will be tracked by our allies and they will not go for some of the corrupt schemes. As it happens with some of the internal Ukrainian budget funds, so all of that should go for military, not for officials, let's say Ukrainian officials. Guys, I'm saying the things as they are. So we need to monitor those funds. I mean, our allies should monitor for them to go to the proper destination. In addition, the United States of America implemented new sanctions against Russia, including some of the Russian financial institutions. The Russian ruble currency went down and dollars skyrocketed to the moon, and Russians went to exchange their rubles for American dollar. Yeah, those are the cues for the cash exchange. 
Awesome news continues. This time, Jens Stoltenberg said that all of the NATO member countries should be obligatory, obligatory supporting Ukraine, including Hungary. They are now working on some CERN document for this feature. Jens Stoltenberg said that they want to use the command structure of the common NATO funding. At the same time, Viktor Orban, the leader of Hungary, after meeting with Jens Stoltenberg, said that Hungary will not block the NATO initiatives for Ukraine. I'm quite surprised something went wrong with Viktor Orban. The Ukrainian military intelligence chief Budanov today answered some of the questions for the journalists. He said that Russia deployed S-500 brand new air defense systems in Crimea for the test purposes. Yeah, every day or every night there are drones flying over Crimea. For example, just yesterday they struck two of the Russian air defense systems in Belbek. Those were S-300s. So Russia now think that S-500 might solve the situation, but no. And we have the confirmation of demolished Russian air defense systems in Crimea near Belbek airfield. So here we go, the systems were severely damaged. Those are S-400 actually. Well, at least this one for sure was damaged and for this one, one well maybe i guess that the launching unit is still intact but it is the most expensive part of the system that was targeted it is the radar Budanov confirmed that Russia is using the carriage bridge for the military purposes, for the supplement of their personnel in Crimea, and also sending more reinforcements to the south region of Ukraine, which is now occupied by Russia. Also, Budanov said that Russia hasn't yet started the offensive operation in some region. They hesitate to do it because of lack of their resources, and they see what happens in Kharkiv Oblast, with their huge losses and inability to secure the ground. Russia has created a new generation of the AVAX surveillance airplane, they call it A-100. It should be the replacement of A-50. By the way, Russia lost two of the A-50s, which were shut down by the Patriot system. Well, what changes were made for the new modification of the Russian AVAX? Basically, the range expanded vastly. It now may detect the enemy bombers at a distance of 900 kilometers. Russia was working on this project even before the war had started, so they had some of the spare parts by the time. But with current sanctions applied on Russia, I don't think that they managed to build one more airplane like that. The standard Russian A-50 AVAX airplanes were built during the Soviet Union times. Later on, they were slightly modernized, and this is the new generation. They have one unit which made the maiden flight today. The other brilliant Russian technology was spotted all around the front lines. We are speaking about the hangar tanks or the turtle tanks. It has the electronic valve on the top, so the drone jammer, and the protection of the tank is literally taken from the roof. Nevertheless, it didn't help for this particular unit, it was stopped by the Ukrainian FPV drone, which went into the aft part of this vehicle. Armenia decided to leave the CSTO organization, it is so-called Russian NATO. The military alliance between Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Armenia. Now the Armenian government sees that Russia is not friendly for them, so they decided to cancel all of the agreements in the military sphere. At the same time, Armenia got some of the backup from the United States of America. The last night Russia hit Vasilkiv, it's the military base, the military airfield of Ukrainian Air Force. It's not the first time that Russia strikes the place, but they used a very unique warhead for their cruise missiles, cluster munition warhead. Those clusters were found in Vasilkiv, so the idea of the Russian army was taken from Ukrainian experience, then Ukraine used Atakams missiles to target Russian military airfields, causing severe devastation for the Russian air vehicles. Here Russia performed a similar strike. The idea for Russia is to get rid of Ukrainian aviation, and sometimes, unfortunately, they are quite successful with that. For example, new images were released how they attack Mirgorod airfield. So here we have the image from the Russian surveillance drone. By the way, guys, I'm out of clue how the Russian surveillance drone managed to get so deep into Ukraine, because the distance from Mirgorod to the front lines is around 150 kilometers. And here you see how the shell went to the parking position of the Ukrainian fighter jet Suhoi 27. Suhois are definitely based in Mirgorod. But with what Russia is able to strike this military airfield, well, they have ballistic missiles with a range up to 700 kilometers, I guess. Those are Iskander, so 
for the successful strike they basically need a surveillance drone and Iskander, that's it. So the single airplane unfortunately was destroyed. For this reason Ukraine is now negotiating with allies to base F-16s not in Ukraine partially but also in NATO military airfields. Well Russia says that it's the step for escalation but we'll see how it goes. Let me show you the Mergerit airfield. It is located somewhere over here. Yes indeed it's Mergerit and it's really far away from the border with Russia and still Russia is able to conduct surveillance missions and definitely it's the same airfield. Here are even Ukrainian Sukhoi 27 staying on the apron. Well maybe some of those airplanes are not air voices. sometimes it happens but Ukraine tries to restore all of the military airplanes. You see the same as in the Russian military airfields Ukraine is in lack of the hangars for storing those jets. So definitely the Russian surveillance drone was able to reach Mirgard without being spotted. Also the same airfield Russia hit the Ukrainian S-300 air defense system. Here we see that definitely it was hit. Unfortunately there are no Iskander missiles in the Ukrainian army with such a long range but I think Ukraine might still use attackers to target Russian military airfields However, yet we haven't seen those strikes on the Russian airfields, for example, in Belgorod Oblast with Atakam's missiles. Ukraine tries to cope with Russian surveillance Zola drones, hitting them with FPV drones, and sometimes it is quite successful. So, for example, this Zola drone was hit down by FPV. Argentina is negotiating with France the possible transfer of those fighter jets. The name of the jet is Super Attendard or Attendard, sorry guys, I'm not good in those names. But nevertheless, those are unable to fly in Argentina because United Kingdom applied some of the sanctions. So probably Argentina is unable to maintain those, that's why they want to send them to Ukraine. Well, could be a good offer, but again, it requires a separate pilot training and those airplanes are quite old. Those were indeed in French Navy but retired in 2016. The main idea for the jet is to operate from the air carrier. And here we have even the notice that Ukraine is the future operator of the airplanes donated by Argentina. The Argentine government decided to send five of these aircraft to Ukraine. Well, we'll see how it goes. Again, it requires more infrastructure and pilot training. And those jets unfortunately incompatible with Russian Sukhois. But still they might perform some of the specific missions, for example dropping the gliding bombs or launching the cruise missiles to hit the ground targets. For now what we know that the Argentinian president has approved the deal. But judging on F-16 saga it's a long long story. The last year under the previous government Slovakia transferred some of the MiG-29s to Ukraine. Well today FISA's government say that the deal wasn't legit and they started the investigation and criminal case against the officials who signed the deal. For me it's just crazy. What was done was done under the previous government. It was negotiated between Slovakia and Ukraine. And now the new government just went crazy punishing the previous one. They are so stupid. Meanwhile, Ukraine tries to repair as many Soviet airplanes as possible. For example, one more Sukhoi 24 tactical bomber was restored. The images of it were shared in the internet. For now, Ukraine has more of the aircraft of that type compared to what it was before the full-scale war with Russia. At the same time, Ukraine lost a few of those airplanes. Russia continued to strike Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. For this reason, during the winter time, there will be numerous of the blackouts in Ukraine. Well, now there are already blackouts, but during the winter time it could be more severe. Today Russia hit a residential civilian building in Krivihri. I cannot show you the dramatic images, but I can tell you that there are lots of the casualties and all of them are civilians. A brief review of the front lines here again Russia expands their bridgeheads for example near Novoalexandrovka. it was yesterday it is today they took quite a lot of the territory of the local field and their goal is to advance to Vazdvizhenka and next to this very important road also the situation isn't great in Novoselovka Persia again yesterday and today we see this Russian assault vector directly towards the village and for sure this group of Ukrainian forces need to go out to this village at least 
and then maybe next because north south of Kepersh is also probably going to fail kind of soon also russia moved in this place taking this part of the lake and soon they're gonna enter dachi after taking this area i think that they are gonna stop for a while because there are lots of the war obstacles so in general we see a new pace of the russian assault on the east especially in Ocheretne. their goal was to deflect the attention of ukrainian army in kharkiv region at the same time occupy as many territories as possible and now they send more reinforcements to the east it's their main goal to take all of the donetsk oblast under control but this goal is unachievable in a near perspective some experts say that russia might advance in this way so firstly to nova selivka persia then moving over here and finally taking Vazvizhenka and going to cut the road. Well, I also think that it could be done like that. A Ukrainian woman managed to escape the occupied territory of Aleshki on her own, partially covering the way on some sort of the floating device and then climbing on top of the bridge, Antonovsk bridge that was destroyed mostly by Russians after they retreated from the Kherson city. And thankfully, there was the Ukrainian drone which guided the woman to Ukrainian position, so she is now safe. My friends, and now please don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.